welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, teenagers with shotguns. We get a lesson in shooting at the school's challenge. We remind you how to win a new dog transit box worth over £400 from Trans Canine. But first, we're out with a man who reads pigeons so well, rumour has it he was actually raised by them. Farm manager Andy Crow shoots pigeons as if his life depends on it. These high-flying crop chompers do a lot of damage at all times of the year. And that has an impact on Andy's bottom line. So he's spent most of his life trying to keep them off his fields. Today, Andy has built two hides on a field of oilseed rape. One for him, the other for his wingman, cousin Gary. They work as a team because four eyes are better than two. When we arrive, they've been shooting for about an hour and already have 30 birds in the bag. The hides are not tucked into the woodland margin, but sit about 25 metres out to give them a 360 degree view. Yeah, I like it. You get up against the hedge, you, you can't, you've got no, like that when I shot that as that was coming up the hedge behind, or over the shore behind me, so. Yeah. If you've been underneath the shore, you wouldn't have been shot it because you was underneath the oak tree, so. So you, try, you try and give yourself a maximum amount of coverage. Yeah. yeah. Um, this time of year, they these are semi-permanent. These have been here a couple of three days, so they got used to these. Um, in front, Mush. He studies the flight lines as he farms the land and is hoping for a decent day but the conditions are far from ideal, with a low, bright sun and very little wind. So they're not, they're not decoying really hard today, aren't they? No, they're not. Is, is there any reason for that? Uh, they've still got a fair bit of the day left, so right. hopefully they're going to come on to feed a bit better later on. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah. We've still got another four or five, well, five hours, really, of daylight, so... It's very, uh, very light breezes today. Does that, yeah. uh, you yeah. say sometimes that can keep them a bit higher? Yeah, that's, they're not... They can hear the shots and and uh, they tend to keep that much higher. If it was a bit more breeze like the other day when you were here, they, they tend to come down, keep a bit lower, they can't hear the shots. Um, things this time of year, they've got so much to feed on with the clover and buttercup. And the buds are just starting to move, so they're just starting to get on those. So. And plus people have started to drill as well. Yeah, there's a bit of spring drilling about. Um, so they're moving on to that a bit now. So... Uh, They've got so much to choose from. Yeah. That's the problem. So you've got guns elsewhere on the farm today as well yeah. to try and keep them well, moving. Well, top of your head. Um, yeah, I've got a, another gun on a bit of rape, which we've got just down the road. There's a gun on that. He's not doing, he's not doing as well as us. He's had any shots at all, so. Um, but yeah, I've got a few bangers out as well, but just to try and keep them moving, but a day like this, they, they sit in the trees in the sun yeah. for a while and they will come out to feed. Well, that's what I'm hoping. But yeah, they, they have been coming here, so all we can do is just sit it out. Yeah. You say sit, but you never sit down, do you, when you're pigeon shooting? Uh, I'll sometimes do if it's a long, long day, but when they're coming from all ways, but when you've got a wind and they're coming from the same direction, I, I do use a seat a bit, but when they're not, they're coming from all ways, I stand up all the time. Just pay for it the next day. <laughs> Andy has built up quite a reputation as an ace pigeon shooter, especially after he was featured in Sporting Shooter last year with an awesome bag. It was quite a day. The biggest ever bag was with James when we shot uh, 477. That's my best bag. 477? Yeah. How many shells? Uh, that was 526. 526 shells? Yeah, that was a good day. A really good day. They were feeding on. They were feeding on some drillings all round, and it was a, a soybean. Oh, right. So, well, yeah, it was soybean. Um, this chap was just growing them for a trial, um, and they were feeding on it, and there was quite a lot there, and they were still in the, um, 
they were still in their pods. And when yeah. they went through, they just direct drilled it. They didn't cultivate it or anything, just slot seeded it. And uh, um, when they slot seeded it, just knocked all these uh, soybeans out. And uh, oh, it's knocked up. Mm. And uh, the ground was just littered with, uh, with soybeans. Um, there was about, I don't know, 1,500 plus pigeons there. They'd been there about, they were feeding on the field before they cut it. Yeah. Um, but there'd been a few there, no big numbers, but as they were drilling fields all round, they've just pushed the pigeons all to this one field. And then when he drilled this one, they were out there <coughs> hammering so, into that. So, so just so. everything kind of came right for you? Yeah, it did. Oh, it's, the only problem was it was a daylight today, bright sunshine, no wind, and was, I was shooting into the sun all day. It was hard work. But so it could potentially, it could even have been bigger bag? Yeah, it could have been. Yeah, it could have, could have been a lot bigger bag. Um, if we'd had a bit more wind, um, yeah, if there'd been a bit of wind and a bit of cloud, it, it would have been a good bag. Well, sorry, a better bag. There's nothing wrong with that. But, no, so. And, but that's my best day. Yeah. But, but this is, for you, this isn't just sport, although you obviously enjoy it. This is about crop protection. It is. It? Yeah, it is. I love the job. Um, I love the, the sport shooting pigeons. and But it's like you say, it's a job to me. I've, I've got to protect this, this rate. This time of year, they're taking out the middle of the flowers. And it, it puts the... Puts a crop so much farther behind, like this part of the field. That part, the top half of the field is 18 inches, two foot tall, being flowered within the next 10 days. This won't flower for another, probably another four weeks, five weeks before this flowers. So that's going to be that's behind. purely down to where the pigeons have been feeding. Yeah, pigeons and there's rabbits hammered it a bit, but but mainly pigeons. Stepping into Andy's hide is like stepping into his office. All he's focused on are the birds. He never stops moving, always looking for that next opportunity. The board is there to stop him from wearing a furrow in the floor of the hide. Hey, have you always been a mad king pigeon shooter? Always, always, yeah, always. I love pigeon shooting. There's never two birds the same, that's a good thing. Yeah. They. Why don't you shoot? You used, to shoot you used to shoot competitive, competitive clays, didn't you? Yeah, I used to shoot clays for several years, and then the kids come along and it works out a bit expensive, so. I'll give that up and just did more and more pigeon shooting, so. Yeah. Um, coming in on the right. <clears throat> Many pigeon shooters advise changing tactics if things aren't going to plan. Andy is no different. First he changes the choke on his gun, and then the pattern of decoys. Again, everything is done at high speed. You get the feeling that every second counts. They seem to be, they seem to be shying off a bit, so just having a bit of a change around with the pattern. Uh, we've taken the flappers in. I've uh, started up the whirly back near the wood. Um, just see if that, see if that works. The problem is if, if you leave it, if they're not coming and you leave it, um, there's no point in leaving it if they're not coming. You just keep trying things to see if you can get them to, to come into the pattern. There's quite a few birds here. They're not coming. They're not playing ball, really. So we just change the pattern around and see if that, that works. Just have one whirly going, bring the flappers in. If it don't work, we'll have another change around in a minute. So just see how it goes. Pigeon shooting can be quite a sociable to affair, to to but Andy doesn't it. eat or sit while shooting. Um, and if for some strange reason he did need to take five, he has a very special box to park on a recycled human organ transit box. And if anyone else uses anything that's as weird and wonderful as this, then please do let us know. Another of Andy's tips for getting your position right is to have a look at what the birds are feeding on. The rape is on the way out, and these birds taken earlier have empty crops, but white clover and spring drillings are also on the menu. As the sun gets lower in the sky, we leave Andy to it. It's been hard work with very few birds being enticed into the decoys, so there have been some very impressive high shots, and he and Gary have managed a bag of over 150 birds. Yeah. I'm now going to try my luck on a nearby farm where there's a serious deer problem. Andy has taken as many deer from there last year as he has pigeons today. See how I do later in the programme. If everything comes together, pigeon shooting can be huge fun and deliver enormous bags. If you'd like to find out more, here's Charlie with a very sensible suggestion. 
If you want to enjoy more Pigeon action, why not visit our DVD shop page and buy our collaboration with ex-sporting shooter editor James Marchington. In Pigeons, the expert's way, we talk you through hide building, decoys and we get some great tips from top British shot Andy Pye. And once you've filled the freezer, game chef Mark Gilchrist shows us how to prepare that huge bag of birds. Also available is A Year of Deer, Volume 1, 12 Months, 6 Species. We've been lucky enough to go out with some exceptional stalkers and film some incredible deer being stalked. We've chosen the best of the bunch. It's stuffed with great advice and great stories. There's the fallow stalk with the added excitement of an aggressive dog walker throwing abuse as we take out an injured buck. And rugby league legend Kieran Cunningham describes his first red as better than scoring at Wembley. Finally, we're foxing with Robert Bucknell and James Marchington. In this DVD, Robert gives us a fascinating insight into an animal he's dedicated his life to understanding, enjoying and controlling. From calls to lamps, rifles, shotguns and ammo, we visit an incredible range in mid Wales to test ourselves and the equipment before going out after this most cunning of quarry. It's 90 minutes of tips, techniques and action in daylight and at night. Visit our website www.fieldsportschannel.tv and click on DVDs. So, on with the programme and we've got more top class shooting this time at the Oxford Gun Company where they're hosting the school's challenge. The school challenge hosted by the Oxford Gun Company just keeps on growing. Nearly 200 young guns are here today to show off their skills and there really is some talent. Many are fortunate to have shooting as part of their curriculum. Others, instead of heading to the football pitch or cricket nets of an evening, head to their local shooting school. Friends might find their love of shooting a bit strange, but we know they're the cool kids in class. As they register, there are a few distractions to keep them out of mischief. Sealand's welly wanging is a big hit. There's more to it than meets the eye. Keep your eyes peeled for this bit of target practice at a game fair near you this year. A clean round could mean a new pair of boots. Cotswold ATV was also on hand to give them a taster of some tough terrain. They've come on board as a new sponsor for the event this year. Right to the competition, and as usual, there are prizes for the team event and individuals. Someone who set the pace and couldn't be caught, with an impressive 50 out of 50, a first for the school's challenge, was Will Allen from Kyneton High School. A lot, a lot of the public schools, you know, they've got their own clay shooting ground and everything else, but we've just sort of got together, did a few practices and then come here today and we've uh, put a really good score as a team as well, so we're really chuffed. Will's father has been influential in getting the school to accept shooting as a healthy pastime for the children and he believes with the right kind of people any school could get involved. Really fortunate where I was, very supportive head teacher. Um, we've got a Kyneton High School member of staff with us today for the first time, a games teacher, so that's a real, real plus for us and shows that it's working and shows the support we've generated. Um, the other fortunate uh, and lucky thing really is uh, the people around that area. We've got a great sponsor in Steve Cox who runs Banbury Gunsmiths. He's also an international shot. Uh, great kids coach, you know, and he supported us and sponsored us. And, um, and, and that all helps. And then um, kids that are really, really interested and talented. We all know that shooting is an incredibly inclusive sport. It's not just for those sport billies and birthers. Everyone can get a chance to feel that sense of competition with shooting. I mean, I think it gives them the experience of, um, you know, a sport that's an, an in a sense, a, an individual sport. So they, they can, uh, they're competing as individuals, but also part of a team. Um, it also obviously gives them extraordinary precision. It's a very difficult sport. So it's perhaps a boy or girl who's um, perhaps not their natural team player in one of the ball sports can go and do that to a very high level and uh, impress everybody. So it's a, it's we think it's cool. Someone else who thinks it's cool is Amanda Murray. Yeah, yeah, it's good, um, and everyone's just really friendly. And even if you don't know anyone, you can just talk to anyone and all really. Like friendly and talkative. 
Her father got her into the sport, a shrewd move considering what she's achieved in 12 months. She's had a good year. She won about 28 competitions last year in her first year, so she won two championships. Of course, most schools aren't as fortunate as Bradfield to have their own shooting ground. 16-year-old Sean Wood is at a state school in Yorkshire. He certainly travelled the furthest for today's competition and has to contend being the only teenager in the village who has chosen not to play football and cricket but pick up his shotgun. A lot of people are really for it and some people obviously with guns are, are against it but you tell them you know, it's for a competition and like how far I've travelled and they're all urged, urged me to come do it. They're all behind me at home. The school's challenge is about a healthy sense of competition, but fun is a serious part of it. And that even extends to the latest kit on the high street. So what does event organiser David Florent think of the day and what the event is achieving? We need to get the youngsters into shooting and keep shooting going. Um, at the moment, um, there's a lot of bad press out there about shooting. Um, a lot of the government are saying, um, it's, it's bad, it's, it's dangerous, it's not. I mean, you look at all these school children around here, they've all been taught responsibility. Um, I haven't, we haven't had one person do anything dangerous today. Um, they've been taught responsibility, um, they're, ma they're making new friends, they're learning how to do something new, how to do something in the countryside. Um, and that is really what the school's challenge is out there for. At the beginning of May, the school's challenge heads to Breeden School in Gloucestershire and they're fielding a team today. So what do they and their teacher like about the shoot? There were a couple of hard ones, hard stations, uh, ones coming over the top of you. There's a lot of facilities to shoot in and they're very good. The scorers in each box are very nice and always <laughs> um, helped you through it. And yeah, it was really good. A long time ago, I actually wanted to start uh, clay shooting uh, a long time ago um, and got the, the go-ahead from the headmaster. And uh, originally, we actually did away from the school because of health and safety reasons, and etc. Et um, it wasn't until really uh, that uh, David Florent actually came as a student at Freedom School that we um, w were really able to actually set up a clay shooting ground on the actual site itself. So it, it, from there it's just blossomed. So it's been great. After a hard day's shooting, it's time for the speeches and the prizes. The big one goes to Millfield School, picking up a Browning 525 shotgun for their school. Will Allen picks up the senior individual with his straight 50. Amber Hill wins the senior ladies. The Rabbit Mania was won by Amanda Murray and the pool shoot by Sam Treadcold. A great school sports day. Some great shooting there from those talented youngsters. Now competition time with Charlie. Dog Transit Box Company Trans Canine has generously offered us one of their exceptional bits of kit as a competition prize. For your chance to win a box worth up to £450, all you have to do is send us your shaggy dog story with an action shot of your beloved pooch. We want to hear about that exceptional day's sport with your dog. Your entry will be judged by us and a professional sporting photographer. All you need to do is send your entry to me, charlie, at fieldsportschannel.tv. The winner will be announced at Trans Canine Stand at the CLA Game Fair in July. Good luck and thanks to everyone who has entered so far. Now, let's go back to Andy Crow, where we'll be swapping shotguns for rifles as we head out to do some deer control on a nearby farm. So, Andy's told us about this area where he's planted um, Italian ryegrass, which effectively uses as a buffer crop. It's, um, it attracts a deer, they'd rather feed on that because of, uh, it's got like a high sugar content effectively. And the, the idea is that they'll come and graze there and that'll leave um, the rest of the arable crops, the wheat and, and what have you, from getting uh, too much attention from the deer. Um, so we're gonna go and there's a high seat up near the top of the field. We're gonna go sit up there uh, and just see if anything comes out. Fingers crossed. 
We make our way to the homemade high seat, which is not the most comfortable, so we're hoping for a quick result. It's a homemade high seat. Always make sure you unload your rifle before you climb up. Especially if you've got a cameraman with you. Conditions seem perfect, but trust our luck, the only showing we have are of two row, a buck and a doe. With light fading fast, we call it a night, and are treated to a spectacular moonrise. And sometimes such sights are reward enough. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week. In the meantime, this has been Field Sports Britain enforcing its own wood pigeon no fly zone. <laughs> <laughs>